Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the Obstacle Racing Media video cast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an interview with Kyle. The podcast will be up shortly. This is a special video version edited down to give you the most juicy bits about what's new with Tough Mudder, what's old with Tough Mudder, how do I exchange my tickets for tickets, what do I get out of the deal, all that fun stuff in a nice video interview with some fun graphics to help explain. I hope you enjoy it. Away we go. The first event is Virginia in May, and then what else do we have in 2020 that's absolutely going to happen in the U.S.? Yeah, so Virginia in May, new venue, same city as we were in last year, right? So if you remember last year, there was a little bit of a hullabaloo around the venue that we had that the county had asked us to use because it was a park that had some environmental protection restrictions around it. So we've moved to a new venue just down the road from that in the same place, much closer to DC, May 30th, kicking off the calendar uh, there. Next event, Twin Cities, you know, same venue we've always been at, relatively same weekend we've always been at, uh, you know, second weekend of July uh, in Hugo, Minnesota, followed by potentially Colorado. So we're anticipating that Colorado is going to be a early August event, uh, still pinning down final venue contract on the pieces there. We were close right before December happened, and you know, we're just restarting and finalizing those conversations now. Uh, but hoping to be back in Colorado early August. Uh, back to Chicago, the Rockford International Airport venue, which will also be a 10th anniversary and a toughest uh, weekend, uh, April 22nd, 23rd weekend, or sorry, August 22nd, 23rd. Uh, and then September right now, uh, we're finalizing a couple pieces in the calendar, but you know, you're going to have Tri-State, Seattle, and, to and hopefully Toronto if the uh, Canadian process pans out right. And then October, you know, you've got Dallas uh, followed by Worlds in the first weekend of November, first full weekend of November, and then SoCal the, the weekend after that. And that'll be our, our nine full Tough Model Weekends plus Worlds and a Toughest this year. What is the thinking behind putting a TBD say for Colorado and not one for Toronto. Why not just wait just cause there's been so much stuff. Why not just go, you know what guys, I know we'd like ticket sales to go on sale, but let's just wait an extra week or two and then we confirm, Hey, here's our schedule. Cause we always tell people don't, don't sign up for an event that doesn't have a date or a venue, whether it's a new sure. race or an old race. We're like, that's sketchy. Yeah. So there's a lot of people, right. Who are going to go to the Colorado event, regardless of what day it is now. The cause they live there. there because they live there, because it's their hometown event now, because, um, you know, I mean, Jim Campbell's there. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just, you know, Jim, Com Jim Campbell and Colorado are synonymous. Okay. Um, but, you know, we put it up to, to one, let people know that it's coming, you know, uh, and that it's going to be there. And two, once the event is up, we can start to transfer, just from a system standpoint, we can transfer people into it. Yeah, so if we got somebody who was going to do Arizona, you know, for let's say, and then they wanted to transfer into you know, Colorado, we can't do anything with their ticket unless we've actually created and launched the event. So because we put it up, yeah, I'm not expecting a ton of people are going to buy tickets when it says TBD on it. Um, but because we've got it up, we can transfer people into it. We can do other things, you know, from a systems point of the back end. But but Canada must not be as close, or you wouldn't have, or you would have put that one up. That just must have a few more hoops. No. It's not up because the Canadian process is still happening in court. Once that happens, you know, the regular, you know, and assuming everything goes as planned, the regular Toronto event will come back uh, and just be reopened for registration. Okay. So I'm going to go over people's options for tickets because I think after explaining it a few times, I think I have it and you can correct me <laughs> otherwise. So if I have a ticket to an event that is not going to happen, yeah, no New Orleans, um, but uh, College Station was early in the year. Missouri was early in the year. So I think we were scheduled for 27 events, you know, 27 events plus Worlds last year. And we're now doing nine plus Worlds All in right. North so America. So if you have so tickets to those 16 that aren't happening or whatever the math is, here are my options. I can transfer that to any Tough Mudder this year or next year. Correct. And two spartan passes yep open wave so not elite not age group any distance yep this year or next year correct okay that's step one that's that's a pretty good that's a pretty good deal okay well so there's let's start with open ticket 
So an open TM ticket is essentially like a gift card. You now you're buying a ticket that you can that can be used for any 5K. Yeah, you know, let's say if, so. If you buy the 5K open ticket, you can redeem it for any Tough One or 5K. You know, on the North American calendar, or you know, if you buy a classic open ticket, you can redeem it for any you know ticket on the, on the. We only sell them for a limited period of time, usually you know somewhat before the calendar launches. So again, for people who know that they're going to run a couple of tough runners but haven't you know finalized their schedule, they might buy a couple a couple open tickets because they're a good deal. So if they've got the open ticket you now um, and they haven't redeemed it yet. Uh, they can redeem it for you know any 2020 event that's still on the calendar, or we'll roll those over to 2021, uh, and they can use them next year for any you know event in their category or class as well. And they will also get you know, the two free Spartan Open tickets. Okay. How, so what's next? You could have the Holy Grail Pass, which gives you a, a tougher, a toughest, and worlds. Uh, we had a, a couple of worlds bundles, right, where you could have gotten worlds plus a season pass or worlds plus uh, a toughest and a few different ones. So essentially, because we're still hosting worlds this year, you know, your world usage on, on any of those passes has to be used uh, this year in, in 2020. Uh, but for the other uses on those passes, we'll honor them in 2020 or 2021. Uh, and then you'll get the the Spartan offer as well uh, if they were individual events. Can I do Europe as well? Yeah, yeah, Europe counts for the Holy Grail. Midlands or, or whatever. Midlands or Australia. Okay, not that that's convenient for people, but I'm just thinking out loud here. Yeah, okay. yeah. so there's there still options and ways to get it, right? So I don't think we're going to take the Holy Grail away this year, right? There will still be plenty of people who will earn their Holy Grail and you know, earning the 2020 Holy Grail will probably come with its own unique badge of honor, right? Because you'll be doing something that, uh, that wasn't necessarily easy to do, uh, harder than it has been in the past. Okay. Uh, but we're, you know, we're working on all sorts of you know, amendments and exceptions to rules and policies and contender status and Holy Grail and all those other things you know, based on the impact of the abbreviated schedule. And, and look, part of the reason why we're not rushing into an answer on that stuff is that we want to see community feedback on it. Uh, and I read everything. I digest comments and posts and, and all that kind of stuff. So you know, we're open to ideas. Share your feedback. Well, so the big one is season passes, right? You know, so if you had purchased a season pass you know, uh, for 2020 already you know, this year, if you purchased it in 2019 for the 2020 season, uh, you will be able to use that pass for 2020 and 2021, as well as getting the Spartan Open Pass for 2020 and 2021. So hands down, best deal in OCR, right? You essentially get two years of racing uh, in both you know, Tough Mudder and Spartan for your 2020 Tough Mudder Pass. We will be launching a new season pass, though. We've got a lot of requests for it in the last couple of days. It'll be a, a lower price than the old one had initially been, given the abbreviated schedule. But if people but it, still want a Tough Mudder Pass, it'll just be good for 2020 you know, events. And it will not have a Spartan bonus. Correct. Yeah. Any any new tickets being sold you know, from last week onwards will not have the Spartan bonus you know, attached to them. And for people out there who are very upset and say, I don't want any of those things. I just want my money back. You can go to your credit card. This has been proven since 2011 and say, I paid for a service. I didn't get it. And they will refund your money. I know that's not your department, but I'm just letting people know that's how it works. Yeah. And look, those you know, people's frustration and feelings like that are certainly valid, but our goal is certainly to keep them in Tough Mudder, in Spartan. We're giving them a ton of options and a lot of perks to be able to keep this moving in the right direction. Okay, the other question is, how different will my experience be as a Tough Mudder participant? Well, that's, a, that's a general and broad question. I mean, With new ownership, will my experience be any different? I certainly don't think so. I mean, if, only, if anything, it's only going to get better, right? Um, and I, but I think largely in 2020, people should expect to see exactly what they got in 2019 uh, with a lot of the improvements that we were already planning on. So we were you know, planning upgrades to the festival. We had new obstacles coming out on course. We're obviously still kind of in, uh, in rebuilding mode here. And we got to see how much of that we're going to be able to, you know, to get up and running again for the first part of the season. Things will continue to kind of roll out as we go along. But it's the same team delivering the same events, you know, with the same obstacles and everything that people have come to know and love about Tough Mudder just under new ownership. You had planned uh, a couple of 10-year anniversary Bruhahas. <laughs> I believe they were they were tri-state Chicago and something else. Tri-state Chicago. I think LA was supposed to be the the first one. 
Right. Uh, so yeah. Virginia, which is the first event on the calendar, is not one of these special brouhaha's. Correct. But Tri-State, which is a legendary event, I mean, legendary location, uh, and um, Chicago will have what? What can we expect? I'm sure there'll be some surprises, but what, what can we expect if I want to go to one of those events? Sure. Surprises for sure. 10th anniversary. You, know, uh, you might see some old signature obstacles you know, from the archives pop up. We're going to have 10th anniversary headbands. Uh, there'll be a bunch of festivities that we'll be announcing in the coming weeks there. Uh, but you know, the short, short answer there is stay tuned for updates on that one. What else do we want people to know, Kyle? Or do you Look, want people to know? We're back now. We're back. We're moving. U.S. team moves into uh, a new office with the, the Spartan New York team this week. Um, I guess my, my requests to you now to your listeners and to the community are uh, be patient with us, right? We got a lot of things to figure out, a lot of things to put back together. It's going to take some time, but we want to hear the feedback. We want to you know, hear the questions. We're updating the FAQ doc that we sent out last week and posted it in live time. There's new questions pop up every day that we haven't thought of. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're getting information out there as transparently as possible. But we've got a great season planned. We've got a great season in the UK planned as well. So if anybody was you know, waiting to make their trip over, you're definitely going to want to be there for the Unholy Grail weekend uh, in middle of June at Midlands. So, uh, you know, a new thing that we're trying, but it'll be uh, you know, quite the challenge for those that are looking to step up uh, what they've, what many in the community have previously done on a toughest weekend. This will be a whole new level for that. So, which is which is what a a five k uh, tougher and then toughest, and a classic, and so is that four things? Four things. All four, all four race formats that are offered that weekend. Wait a minute, I might weekend. have to. Do, uh, so I don't know if you heard breaking news. I'm going to that event. I, I heard. Yeah. Dude, well, I might, I might have to just swing a lap or two at toughest at night and get this because this is super rare. Yeah. I mean, a, I hadn't thought a, about that. It's a, uh, it's a phenomenal course too. Yeah. Like that venue is hands down, probably one of the best venues that we have around the world. It's the unholy grail. Yeah. And that's how I'm going to speak all weekend and English people are going to hate me. Yeah. I mean, you don't think they already hate you? Kyle, what's, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I think you found an, a newfound celebrity. You know, uh, you, know you, you probably garnered more UK listeners in the last, uh, in the last few months than, than you've collectively had over the years. It's, it's... I have no idea who Matt B. Davis is. It's, it's very possible because obviously we had some listeners over there. Uh, I'll give a shout out to uh, Ian K who came on the program and helped me uh, yep. explain some things. I just thought of another question that might be a stay tuned. It's only day four, but I do remember there was a, there was a big thing about, Hey, no more deals, like straight pricing. Is that yep. are we gonna have to wait till next year for that to kind of do its thing? No, look, that's still the goal, right? And it was transparent pricing. It was you know, us being able to be forthcoming about here's what the prices are. Here's when they're going to rise. We're, we're not making the prices artificially higher so that they can, we can then give discounts and bring them back down again. Uh, we're largely going to stick to that. And we, we might run just as we had you know, at Black Friday and other things, so we have the occasional promo or special, but it will be a truly, you know, it'll be a special or a sale. It's not going to be a like, hey, every time you go to the top of our website, uh, there's a different promo code or a different sale running. Uh, and a lot of people have asked like, well, why are you keeping the, you know, the March 12th price increase? Now you've just turned ticket sales back on. Uh, it's because that was one of the first price increases that was scheduled all throughout the season. Um, and if you were going to buy back in January or you're going to buy in March, like, you know, you were going to buy it and, and go ahead and, and commit your ticket and get that done now. Uh, but on the event pages, you can now see when all the, you know, the price increases are scheduled for. And in most cases, they're jumping up in relatively small increments you know? So $10 or $15, not $20 or $30 at that point. We'll certainly have more updates and news coming in the next couple of weeks uh, as we start to, you know, confirm Colorado and other final things. Hopefully, you know, we'll have good news about Canada in the next couple of weeks and uh, a lot of exciting announcements for the 2020 season to come. And there you have it. That was Kyle in the links below. There will be the Tough Mudder FAQ, as he talked about, which is a live document. It's going to be updated more and more as the questions keep rolling in. You can feel free to ask a question here. And if I can answer it, I will say so. If I can't, I will say, I don't know. Please ask Tough Mudder. Did you know that if you're a fan of this program, you can support us on Patreon? Patreon, if you haven't heard, it's a cool thing, right? Like you enjoy content that you get for free. 
You can give those people a few bucks. Never necessary, but you can certainly do it. I'll include that link below as well. You can donate as little as a dollar a month. All right, everybody. We've got tons of videos and podcasts and other fun stuff if this is your first time here. Uh, so I'll put all those links below. All righty. Take care. Love you, miss you, mean it. I have got to run.